Vanchakaupa-tarupyascha-kripa-sindhu-paye-vacha-patitanam-pavan-hebhyo-vaishnavibhyo-namo-namaha-jaya-shri-krishna-chaitanya-prabhu-nityananda. Shri-atvaita-gadadha-shri-vasa-dikor-bhakta-vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're recounting the pastimes of Lord Krishna as described in the Krishna book. And we're on chapter number 11, which is entitled Killing the Demon, Vatsasu, the Demons, Vatsasura and Bakasura. So in the last chapter we heard how Krishna, baby Krishna had brought the the, the mortar between the two Arjuna trees and he knocked over the two Arjuna trees and the two demigods, Nala Kuvera and Manigriva, came out. So, the two demigods then offered prayers to Krishna and then went to heaven, went back to the, their home in the heavenly planets. But the, the, two, the two trees falling down made a great sound. And so Nanda Maharaj and the other people in Vrindavan well, the other people, not in Vrindavan, in Gokul, they all came to find out what had happened, what was the noise. And when they saw how these two big trees had fallen down suddenly, for no reason, then they were really surprised. And they saw how Lord Krishna was tied up to the wooden mortar and they, they, they also were surprised to see that because Nanda Maharaj didn't know Mother Yashoda had tied up Krishna. They thought maybe some demon had come there and knocked over the trees. So they asked the children, the other children who were present there, they said, what happened? How did these trees fall down? And the children said, well, Krishna pulled the mortar between the trees and he knocked them down. And then two demigods came out from the trees. So the men, when they heard the children speak like this, they thought, oh, it couldn't really be like that. The children are just saying things that couldn't have happened like that. But some of the men, they believed it because they knew that already some amazing things had happened. They had seen how Putana had come 
and Krishna had somehow bit her, bit her breast and she had revealed her big form as a Rakshasa. And then they saw also Trinavarta, the whirlwind demon, had picked up baby Krishna and he had crashed on the ground and died because he, hit, he fell from the sky and hit a big stone. But he was carrying Krishna and Krishna was unharmed. And when Krishna was placed below the cart, at that time the cart had all fallen apart, but Krishna was unharmed. So they knew Krishna was a bit, not an ordinary child. He had some special kind of power. So Nanda Maharaj untied Krishna and then the gopis came and they picked up Krishna and they began to, they began to praise him and comfort him and uh, they were singing songs to him. And so when they sang, Krishna also danced, just like a little child. He revealed himself as a child. He began to sing and dance with the gopis. So sometimes Mother Yashoda would ask Krishna to carry something for her. He would, she would ask him to bring this piece of wooden plank which she would often sit on. So it was actually a bit too heavy for Krishna, but still, because he's just a small child, but somehow he, he would try to carry it. And sometimes Nanda Maharaj would ask Krishna to bring his wooden wooden shoes. He, he had wooden shoes, what we call kurams, and Krishna would put them on his head and carry them there to bring for his father. Sometimes he would be asked to bring something which was just too much, too heavy for him, so that people would all laugh. But this was Krishna's pastimes. He is showing to everyone how he is controlled by the desire of his pure devotees. So one day the fruit, a lady selling fruit came to the house of Nanda Maharaj and she invited anyone to come and get some fruits from her. So in those days, there were no, there, there was no money. People would just give some something else in exchange. So Krishna brought a handful of rice to give her. And 
ปลี่ยนของสังการและกันแล้วตอนนั้นเนี่ยกฤษณะก็จะเอานะคะเข้าสารกำมือเนี่ยมาเพื่อที่จะแลกกันนะ But his hands were very small, so he could, could hardly carry any rice in his hands. And what he did have in his hands, it fell out. And so when the fruit vendor, when he came to the fruit vendor, he he just had a few grains. But the fruit vendor was so attracted by Krishna. That she gave him armfuls of fruit. She filled his arms with fruit. And when she looked, when when after she filled, after she given all the fruit to Krishna. She looked in her basket, and she saw that little bit of rice which he had given her. It had all become jewels, and her basket was full with jewels. So this is important. It shows us that if we give something to Krishna, we're not the loser, but we gain many, many times, a million times. So, and you give to Krishna; it's the greatest benefit. So one day Krishna was playing with Balaram and the other children on the banks of the Yamuna, and it came time for their lunch. So Rohini, the mother of Balaram, she came to call the Krishna and Balaram to come home and take lunch. But they were all playing so much that they didn't want to come. Krishna and Balaram were they were just playing with the boys, and the boys wouldn't let them go. So Rohini wasn't able to get them to come home. So she went home and she told Mother Yashoda, "You have to go and get them. They won't listen to me." So when mother when mother Yashoda as soon as she comes to think of Krishna and she's calling Krishna, her breasts fill up with milk, and she calls Krishna, "Come home, You're, it's time for lunch." You played enough. You must be hungry. You can come and drink the milk from my breasts. And she told Balaram, "You should come too, also. You you've been playing all morning." Come home. Your father is waiting. Nanda Maharaj is waiting for you. He likes to eat with you. You should come now. So when they heard Nanda Maharaj was waiting for them, then they immediately Krishna and Balaram decided they would come. But their friends said, "No, don't go. You can't leave us." So when Balaram heard that 
คุณพ่อรออยู่ใช่ไหมคะก็เลยทางคู่ก็เลยบอกว่าโอเคงั้นเดี๋ยวเราไปกันละดีกว่าแต่ทีนี้เพื่อนเพื่อนที่เล่นด้วยกันอยู่เนี่ยเขาก็จะบอกว่าโอ้ยเธอยังไปไม่ได้นะเธอทิ้งฉันไปแบบนี้ไม่ได้นะ And Krishna's friend said, "If you go now, we don't want you to come play with us again." So Krishna became afraid, and he wouldn't go. He would stay longer. So Mother Yashoda would tell the children, "You shouldn't say like that. It's not good." And she told Krishna, "You should come home. You you're not just a street boy. You have a home. You have to come home." So then, Queen Maya Shola, นะคะก็จะบอกกับเพื่อนที่พูดแบบนั้นกับ Krishna. เธอพูดแบบนั้นไม่ได้นะมันไม่ดีเลยนะแล้วก็จะบอก Krishna ว่า Krishna, เธอต้องกลับบ้านให้เป็นเวลานะเพราะว่าเธอเนี่ยมันไม่ใช่เด็กข้างถนนเธอมันเด็กที่มีบ้านเพราะฉะนั้นถึงเวลาเธอก็ต้องกลับบ้าน You've been playing all day, all morning, and you've got dirty. Now you have to come home and take bath because today's your birthday. We have to do ceremony today. You have to give cows and charity to the brahmanas. <laughs> All of your friends are all—they're all dressed and they're decorated nicely. You should also come home and get cleaned up and dress nicely. Then you can play. So Mother Yashoda, she can only think of Krishna and Balaram as her children. But of course, they're not children. They're not ordinary children. So Krishna and Balaram went home, and Krishna, after he's dressed and decorated, then they called the brahmanas and they gave the cows in charity for his birthday. So this is real charity to give cows to the brahmanas. It's the highest charity. So the all the men. In Goko, they decided they had to have a meeting to discuss about all these strange happenings which have been taking place. Because they had seen how different demons had been coming and trying to kill Krishna and Balaram. So Nanda Maharaj has one brother named Upananda, and he is very senior and he is very learned and respected in the community of the Vaishyas. So he told all the men present, all the people, because he he was the leader. So he told the people. He said, "I think we have to leave this place, g o k u l because so many demons are coming here, and it's not peaceful here anymore. They're always coming trying to kill the small children." คนนี้เขาก็ออกความคิดเห็นว่าฉันมีความเห็นว่าเราเนี่ยจะต้องออกไปจากโบกูลแล้วแหละเนื่องจากมารพวกนี้พยายามจะมาแล้วก็ฆ่าเด็กเนี่ยหลายครั้งแล้วเพราะฉะนั้นเราควรออกจากสถานที่นี้ไปมันเป็นสถานที่ที่อันตราย First there was the demon Putana and then we had the whirlwind demon Trinavarta 
ล้วก็เพราะว่าเราก็เห็นได้ว่าตอนแรกเนี่ยเราก็มีมีมารที่ชื่ออุตนาหลังจากนั้นตีนวัตก็มา And now these two trees have suddenly fallen down. We don't know why. We don't know what, what was the reason. It's only by the mercy of the Lord that nobody got injured. None of the children got injured. They could have been crushed by those big trees. So I think it's not safe for us to stay here any longer. We have to find. I, and he said, I think we have to go to Vrindavan. There's a place with there's there's a nice forest. Known as Vrindavan, I think if we go there, we can be happy there and we'll be safe there. Vrindavan is very good place for the cows. There's a lot of grass there to eat. And there's many plants and different herbs growing, and we can all live there peacefully. And with the, there's also the Govardhan Hill there; it's very beautiful. So he says, I think we should go immediately to Vrindavan. No need to stay here any longer. Let us pack up everything, and we'll go there. And we'll bring all the cows. We'll live there in Vrindavan. So all the cowherd men agreed. They packed up everything. They loaded it all onto carts, and all the women and children and the old men, everybody. There, and all the in the front was all the cows. And the the cowherd men, they armed themselves with bows and arrows. Just in case there's any danger or any problem on the way, they had their bows and arrows to defend themselves. And all the men, they were blowing bugles. They had these bugles they were blowing, and as they walked in the makeup procession, it was very noisy. It was very joyful. They were going. They're playing on these bugles, and there's a lot of sound. And the cows were also mooing, making their noise, and all the carts were rolling. And all the ladies of Vrindavan, all these, all these ladies who were with them, like Mother Yashoda and Rohini and all the other gopis, they were all dressed up very beautifully with all their ornaments and saris, and they were all chanting the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Mother Yashoda held Krishna, and Mother Rohini she held Balaram, and they both sat on the cart, and they had their children in their laps, and they were also singing and talking about Krishna. And 
So they came to Vrindavan. They came into Vrindavan and they, all the carts, they made like a, a half a circle and, the, and they made their residence there in, in Vrindavan beside the river Yamuna, on the banks of the Yamuna and near to Govardhan Hill. So all, all, all the people, including Krishna and Balaram, were very happy to see the beauty of Vrindavan with the nice Govardhan Hill and the Yamuna River and all the peacocks and all the nice flowers and fruits and trees and grass. It was very nice, beautiful place. So Krishna and Balaram, they're growing up and they start to talk more and they get, have a lot of childish talking and give a lot of pleasure to the people in Vrindavan. So when they're old enough, Krishna and Balaram, when they're about five years old, then they're sent to take care of the calves. The men take care of the cows and the young boys, they take care of the calves. So Krishna and Balaram with other young boys, they went into the, 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 on the nice, find a nice pasture, nice field where there's nice grass and take the calves there. So some, they, they were taking care of the calves and the two brothers also, they play on the flute. The cowherd boys, they always carry the flute because they play their flute to call the cows. And you know young children they like to play with balls, they play, they get a ball, they throw a ball around and so in Vrindavan they would get some fruit, they'd get the bale fruit. And the bale fruit is a bit like a cricket ball, a bit bigger than a cricket ball, very hard. And there's another fruit called amalaka, it's also a kind of roundish. So they, they would throw it and throw it to each other. Okay. Uh, and the children, they enjoy playing with each other and one of the things they used to do was imitate the sounds of the bulls and the cows. And sometimes they play like two bulls fighting each other. <coughs> and they would, if they, then they would sometimes cover themselves with blankets. One would be the, the bull, one would be the cow, and they would be playing games like this. 
็จะเล่นตัวหนึ่งเป็นวัวตัวผู้คนหนึ่งเป็นวัวตัวเมียบางตัวเป็นกระพิงบ้างเป็นควายบ้างก็ชนกัน And they would make they would make the sound of the different animals and the different birds. Make the sound of the frogs. Make the sound of the peacocks. So this week, Krishna and Balaram were enjoying just being ordinary children with the cowherd boys. Of course, these cowherd boys are also very special souls. They perform pious activities for many lifetimes. ชายเลี้ยงวัวต่างๆพวกชายเลี้ยงวัวนี้ก็เป็นดวงวิญญาณพิเศษที่เขาแนะทำปฏิบัติสมาธิมาหลายต่อหลายชาติมาจนเขาได้โอกาสตรงนี้ในการได้เล่นลีลากับคริชนา So one day when Krishna and Balaram were playing on the bank of the Yamuna that time a demon one of the friends of Kamsa came in the form of a calf แล้วก็มีครั้งหนึ่งนะคะตอนที่กิชนาบารากำลังเล่นกันอยู่นะคะก็มีวัวตัวหนึ่งมามาในเอามีมาตัวหนึ่งมาในรูปของลูกวัว So these demons they have mystic powers they can change their form they can take any form they like so this demon saw how Krishna and Balaram were taking care of the calves so he took the form of a calf But his intention that he was going to kill Krishna and Balaram. l a s t n i a k a m j i n g is t h a t i n h a a m i p a l a n g a m a p i s e k a he s a a a n g l a n g a i e l a n g p a n g p a n g p e l a n g a i k a i n a t a m i k a t o n g a t e t m a o k a i k a m a n i p e i a s a n g h a n Krishna l a a r a So this demon got in with all the other calves, and you know, he just looked like a calf, like all the other calves. But Krishna knows everything, and he understood this was a demon. So Krishna warned Balaram. He made a sign to Balaram, you know, warning him, you know, that this is not a cow. This is a demon. So Krishna and Balaram came behind the demon, and Krishna took hold of the demon. By the back legs, and he whirled him around, and he whirled around, and around, and he threw him up into the top of a tree, a, a big tree. There was a big tree with many fruits growing nearby, and he threw the demon into that tree. Krishna, w a r a m u r Krishna. Krishna. Like Krishna, na ha, go by k a n g l a n ลูกวัวตัวนั้นนะคะแล้วก็จับขาแล้วจากนั้นก็จับเวียงเวียงนะคะหลังจากเวียงเสร็จก็โยนไปบนต้นไม้ต้นใหญ่ทำให้ต้นไม้ทาให้ผลไม้จากต้นนั้นนะคะก็หล่นลงมาเยอะเลย so the demon landed in the tree and he knocked over the tree the tree fell down and The demon also fell down with the tree. The demon was killed, and the tree had many fruits. So all the friends of Krishna they could enjoy all the fruits on the tree. แล้วก็ทำให้มารตัวนั้นนะคะกระเด็นไปสูงมากบนต้นไม้และหลังจากนั้นต้นไม้นั้นก็ล้มลงพร้อมกับมารตัวนั้นก็ล้นลงมาด้วยนะคะทำให้ผลไม้ที่อยู่บนต้นทั้งหมดเนี่ยล้นลงมาทำให้เพื่อนเพื่อนของคริชนาเนี่ย 
So all the cowherd boys were very happy. They would tell Krishna, oh, well done, well done. And the demigods also were watching and they showered flowers on Krishna and Balaram. Of course, when Krishna had, he killed this Vatsasura, later on Radharani told Krishna that he was sinful that he killed the cow and he would have to do some, he would have to do some, uh, he would have to go and bathe in all the holy waters and all the holy places to get rid of the sinful reactions for killing a cow. And so at that time Krishna created Shamakund. He said, I'm not going to go to all the holy places, they can come here. And he dug his foot in the ground and he called all the holy places and all the personifications of all the holy places, they all came and brought water and they poured water and they made Shamakund. So this was the result of Krishna killing the, the, this Vatsasura that Radharani said, you have to purify yourself. So brought, brought about Shama Kund and then Radha Kund also. Because Krishna told Radharani, you you also have to you have to also purify yourself because you've been associating with me. And if I'm if I've been contaminated, you have to purify yourself. So that led to the creation of Radhakund. I think, I think we just had the appearance day of Radhakund a few days ago. So one day all the cowherd boys were on the banks of the Yamuna because they go there for the cows to the calves, they have to drink water, they bathe there, it's cooling for them. So they were all there at the side of the Yamuna. And the boys were also drinking. They were also drink water to refresh themselves from the hot sun. So after drinking, they were sitting on the bank of the river, then suddenly this huge animal appeared, very big, like a mountain. And it, and it was appeared it appeared to be very strong also and it it looked like a like a a, a duck or a heron and it had a big beak mm -hmm. 
ป็นหรือว่าเป็นสัตว์ละลายชนิดหนึ่งที่มันแบบมีรูปร่างใหญ่มาก So when the cowherd boys saw this animal, they were afraid because they'd never seen anything like this before. It was very frightening to look at. This this beast this beast was named with his name was Bakasura. And he was one of the friends of Kamsa. And he was from the same family as Putana. Putana and Bakasura, they were brother and sister. So he had come to get revenge for the killing of his sister. So he had this big sharp beak, and he immediately came and attacked Krishna, and he swallowed Krishna. So when the cowherd boys, including Balaram, when they saw Krishna had been swallowed by the demon, they were really worried. It was like they were going to die. They just didn't know what to do, what to, what, what to happen. That oh, he's, this demon has swallowed Krishna. But when the demon entered into the into the throat, when Krishna entered into the throat of the demon, he became very hot because there's the, the effulgence from Krishna, the Brahma Jyoti, which is from Krishna's body, that burned. Burned the throat of the demon. So just like sometimes you put a chili and it's very hot, you put it in your mouth, you go, you want to spit it out, get it out quick. So when the, when Krishna became very hot, then the demon also he had to throw out Krishna, he had to take Krishna out of his mouth. But then he tried to kill Krishna by attacking him with his beak and pinching him with his beak. He came to attack Krishna. He wants to kill Krishna. So, Bakas, Bakasura, he doesn't understand who is Krishna. That Krishna is not just the son of Nanda Maharaj, but he is the source of the whole creation. The, the demon may be thinking Nanda Maharaj is the father of Krishna, but Krishna is the father of Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe. So, when the demon came trying to peck him with his sharp beak, Krishna just caught hold of the the beak of the demon and he split it and he broke the two halves of the beak. Just, 
Just like a child would take some grass, you take a blade of grass and you can split it in two. So Krishna took the beak of the demon, he split it and this way he killed the demon. So all the demigods were watching and they wanted to congratulate Krishna, so they showered flowers on him from above, from the sky. And there was also, you could also hear blowings of conch shells and beating of drums and blowing the bugle. Everyone wanted to con congratulate Krishna. So, seeing all the flowers coming from the sky and hearing all these auspicious sounds, all the cowherd boys were surprised. They wondered what's happening. And when Balarama and the cowherd boys saw that Krishna was safe, he'd come out of the mouth of the demon and he'd killed the demon, then they were so happy and they were so pleased to see Krishna still with them and still alive. They all came and they embraced Krishna to their chest. They all embraced each other. So then they get the cash together and it's time to go back back home, back to see Mother Yashoda. And when they get home, then they tell people, they tell everybody in the village about what happened and how these demons came and how Krishna killed them. They all loved Krishna and when they heard about what he'd done, they loved him even more. They, they felt more affection for him. And when they heard how Krishna had been saved from death and that he'd been swallowed by that demon but still he'd been come out alive, they were so happy, they felt so much relief. And all, all the gopis and the cowherd men, they all talked about how it's so amazing that these demons had come to kill Krishna, but they had been killed. Instead, they, had, they were coming to kill Krishna, but they were the ones who were killed. And Krishna was not even injured. So then they remembered how Gargamuni had told them like this, that this child, may be attacked by different demons, but that he would be, he would uh, help to bring auspiciousness to the people of Vrindavan. Vrindavan, you like. 
they saw how all the predictions of Gargamuni, which were made at the birth of Krishna, they were all coming true. So the, the people of Vrindavan, Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, all the gopis and gopas, they would talk all the time about Krishna and they would forget all about other things. They'd just be so absorbed in thinking of Krishna. Just like Nanda Maharaj and all the people in Vrindavan, they were always happy because they are remembering Krishna. The same is true today. If we remember Krishna, we will forget all the miseries of the material life. So Krishna and Balaram would imitate different pastimes. They would imitate sometimes the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra with all the monkeys. One of the boys would become Hanuman and he would jump across the water all the way to Lanka, to the kingdom of Ravan. And the other boys, they would help to build a bridge across the ocean to come to Lanka to fight Ravan. In this way they would remember all the wonderful pastimes of the Lord and they pass their time as children and remembering all these activities, enjoying just like children. So this was Krishna's childhood Leela. Okay, so that's the end of the chapter. Is there any question? Anybody? ใครมีคําถามมั้ยคะสามารถอันมิวทได้นะคะฮาริคริชนาค่ะเอออยากจะถามว่าตอนเอ่อตอนที่ลึกนัสเรียกแรกอ่ะค่ะก็คือมาที
and she rose up into the sky and she told Kamsa that you are a fool, Kamsa. The child who is born to kill you has already appeared. So he's already in some other place. พอคำสารู้เช่นนี้ก็พยายามฆ่าลูกทุกคนของเดวกีมาเรื่อยๆจนถึงคนที่ 8 พอคำสารพยายามจะฆ่าคนที่ 8 ปรากฏว่าเด็กคนนั้นเนี่ยหลุดมือและกลายเป็นพระแม่เอ่อดูร์กาแทนนะคะแล้วก็นางก็บอกว่าเจ้าคำสารนางโง่ความจริงเนี
So Putana, when she was killed by Krishna, Krishna took her to the spiritual world to become his nurse in the spiritual world. Because she'd come dressed like a, a devotee, she came looking just like a gopi, she's dressed up like a gopi, so Krishna thought, oh, she wants to be a devotee. And she came and she's offering service to Krishna and she thought, oh, he wa she wants to be my mother. So Krishna took her to the spiritual world. Not, not, she's not on the same level as Mother Yashoda or Devaki, but she's like a nurse there in the spiritual world, in Goloka. <laughs> So, some people say, some, some people, sometimes it's said, it's not in Prabhupada's books, but in some other places it's mentioned that Putana, in her previous life, she was the, I think it, she's the daughter of Bali Maharaj and she saw how Bali Maharaj had been arrested. Her father had been arrested by Lord Vamanadev and, you know, he was sent down to the lower regions where the demons reside. So she had some bitter feelings towards Krishna. So she came, she had bitter feelings towards the Lord, so she came in the form of Putana. แล้วก็ประมาณว่านี้ไม่ได้มีเขียนในหนังสือของเสียงโบราณนะคะแต่ว่าบางที่เนี่ยเขาจะมีบอกไว้ว่าความจริงปุตตนาเนี่ยเป
approach Krishna, we cannot approach Krishna independently. We have to get the blessings of Radharani. If she will introduce us to Krishna, then Krishna will accept us. Krishna is Madan Mohan and Radha Rani is Madan Mohan Mohini, that she can attract Krishna. So she's even greater than Krishna. So we give the greatest importance to Srimati Radharani. Initially, it was only Krishna who was worshipped, and we see there were many temples, just Krishna was there. But after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, then people understand more about the importance and the position of Srimati Radharani. So they would add the deity of Radharani beside the deity of Krishna. So we see people, they often come to Radha Kund and they're coming to Radha Kund just because they understand that she's, you know, the, in, in relation to Krishna. They're actually Krishna's. They're thinking Krishna, and Krishna, and they come to Radha Kund, they offer respects to Radha Kund, but really they're thinking only of Krishna, their consciousness of Krishna. They don't know the actual importance and position of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> And you can read in the uh, Nectar of Instruction how Radha Kund is a very, very special place. It's even greater, more important than Govardhan. It's, it's considered the topmost place, Radha Kund. And Radha Kund is not different from Radha Rani. And of course, we are always chanting the name of Radharani when we chant the Maha Mantra. Hare, Hare means also Radharani. That's the 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 vocative sense of Hare. So we say Radha Krishna, we don't say Krishna Radha, we say Radha Krishna. We have to go first, we have to first of all approach Radha Rani, Hare Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but he came to experience the mood of Radharani, because the pleasure which Radharani is getting is even greater than the pleasure of Krishna. So, 
ของดาราณีนะคะเพราะว่าความสุขที่ดาราณีได้รับโดยการรักกุชนาเนี่ยมันมากกว่าความสุขที่กุชนามีเสียอีก Krishna is the supreme enjoyer, but Radharani was enjoying more than him, so he he had to come and in the mood of Radharani. Krishna is the one who has the most joy, the most joy, but Radharani has the most joy. Therefore, the Lord is coming to understand the joy of the Lord. And so, Radharani is the one who has the most joy, the most joy, but Radharani has the most joy. And so the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they all cult, try to cultivate this mood of Radharani, this Radha Bhava, the ecstasy of which Radharani or Gopi Bhava, the ecstasy, the mood of the gopis, and particularly the mood of Srimati Radharani, because that is the topmost ecstasy in devotional service. <laughs> คำสอนของพระองค์เจ้าเจตัญญาที่พยายามจะสอนให้เราเข้าใจก็คือเกี่ยวกับบาปาของราดารานีกับโกปีนะคะคือความรู้สึกความรักที่พวกท่านเนี่ยมีให้กับกฤษณะเพราะว่าเป็นความรักที่สูงสุดแล้วมันเป็นการอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้ที่ได้รับความสุขสูงสุด Is it clear? Guru Maharaj, much clearer now. Guru Maharaj, just one more clarification. Someone asked, who is God, Radha or Krishna? How to answer this, Guru Maharaj? Who is great, I mean God, Radha and Krishna are equal or something like that? Wait, wait. Okay, Archana. Mataji, I will ask one more question. I will ask, and if there is a person who asks, and who is the Lord, 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 Well, we cannot separate Radha and Krishna. Radha and Krishna are one, you see, but they've become two. Radha represents the pleasure potency, the Ladini Shakti, the end potent pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. You cannot separate Srimati Radharani from Lord Krishna, so they're they're one in this in that in that sense. The 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 Lord with His pleasure potency. อาจารย์บุญมาก็บอกว่าความจริงนะคะก็คือราดากับคริสต์นาเนี่ยเป็นองค์เดียวกันเพราะฉะนั้นเราจะจับทั้งสององค์เนี่ยมาแยกกันไม่ได้นะแต่ว่าราดานี่เนี่ยเป็นพลังงานที่ชื่อว่าลาดินีสตินะที่มาจากคริสต์นา You can't say Krishna is independent of Radha or Radha is independent of Krishna they're together เพราะเราไม่สามารถบอกว่าใครเนี่ยแยกออกมาเป็นส่วนต่างออกมาแอบอกไม่ได้เพราะว่าเป็นเป็นองค์เดียวกัน So a person who asks that question you should get them to read the Krishna book เพราะว่าเวลาเราบอกใครถามคำถามนั้นเนี่ยเราควรให้คนนั้นเนี่ยอ่านหนังสือพระกิสนา Then they can understand better แล้วเขาจะเข้าใจ Okay. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you very much. We will stop here today. Guru Dev, can I have ask little one more about Radha Kunda? Okay. That uh, we we cannot we should not take a uh, shower, right, Guru Maharaj? Like snan from uh, Radha Kunda or Sham Kunda? Well, it's up to you. If you feel you're Qualified to take bath there in the Radha Kund, you can do it, but you have to do it with great respect. Because some, you know, what happened in the past? Some devotees went there, and they were playing, and they were, you know, splashing water on each other, and you know, playing around. And when Srila Prabhupada heard, he was very upset. He said, "This is not respectful." He said, "When you go to bathe in a place like Radha Kund, you must have great respect and bathe with a very, I say, a great pure consciousness." Mm -hmm. So some some spiritual masters say don't bathe, but many do it. You know, many do it. You can do it. And it's, it's mentioned in the scriptures, you know, to take bath there is very powerful. 
but you must do it properly. He said, if you, if you bathe there in the wrong manner, then you're kicking Radharani. You're not pleasing her, you're kicking her. If you just go there and play around in the water. So you must be very careful how you bathe there. And, you know, with very pure consciousness, very careful, offer obeisances, and with a prayerful mood, you go and you can take bath. But don't joke, don't play around. That's the main thing. Just like on the night when Radhakund appears, there's a big festival there, and the whole Radhakund will be full. Many people all go and, you know, all go and take bath at midnight. Because that's when the Radhakund appears, and they all want to take bath at that time. So a lot of people take bath there, but the main thing is you have to take bath in the proper manner, that's all. Don't make any offence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gurudev, sorry, I had one last question, Gurudev, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Gurudev, I, I, uh, myself, in my mind, I'm just not clear on this issue. You know, they, they say Lord Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Srimati Radharani was missing him, although he's there. And secondly, when Lord Krishna came to meet her from uh, Dwarka, but that was already Vishnu Tattva. She said, I can't feel your presence. I mean, despite of them always being together, but Radharani herself cannot feel Lord Krishna's presence. I, I just, I don't know, it's not, although she is Haladini Shakti and, you know, um, the Lord is probably trying to increase her love, but that is why he's not, I, I don't know, Gurudev, I just can't figure this out, I'm a bit... Well, she feels more, there's more ecstasy in the feeling of separation than in union. Feels greater ecstasy. And so Radharani feels greater ecstasy in separation from Krishna. So when Radharani is feeling absence of Krishna, it's to, increase, to, to feel greater ecstasy. Actually, you're right, Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. He, he hid himself in the hearts of the gopis. So he's in the hearts of the gopis. You have to understand more the feelings of separation. And that separation leads to union. It's not all separation. The, the, the feeling of separation leads to un, union. And then when they meet together, then they feel pleasure. But the, the ecstasy of separation, the feeling of at that very intense. So Radharani is experiencing that. And that is Radha Bhav, that is Gopi Bhav. The mood of the Gopi, service in separation. To serve Krishna in separation. Okay, so we will stop. Thank you very much, Archana. Thank you, Guru. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki.